Welcome to the Forest Service web tutorial on QWEP, the quantum GIS interface to the water erosion prediction project. My name is Mary Ellen Miller, and I am a research engineer at Michigan Tech Research Institute. At our last little tutorial, I showed you how to use the rapid response erosion database to download the spatial model inputs you need for WEP. So our first step will be to unzip this little file. So we'll just extract the file and we'll check on our inputs. So this is good. You wanna see a disturbed web folder with soil parameter files as a separate folder because that's gonna get moved into your web modeling folder. We have our DEM, land cover, soils in both burned and not burned. And we also have these web linkage files, which you can use to customize your modeling runs, which is one of the reasons why we use QWEP. So if you happen to know your surface uh, post-fire cover, you can modify that in increments of 5% right here in this land use db.txt file. So let's get modeling. And I encourage you to pay close attention to where your model inputs and outputs are, because that can get confusing. So we have QGIS open and we've already installed QWAP. And so we try to make it as intuitive as possible. So the first step is to load your data using the little bear in the astron astronaut suit button. So we're gonna need to select a project folder name. And I did a little practice run here earlier. So we create a second one. Um, fish run two. So, in, and the name you select here will be used to name your output folders. And the input data is merely the download that we got from the rapid response erosion database. Your critical source area and your minimum source channel length, you can adjust these and it will control the size of your watersheds. So the smaller you go here, the smaller your hill slopes will be. If you want to model unburned conditions, you just check this box. So let's get our data loaded up here. And here we have the fish fire. So our next step is going to be to select a model outlet. And you want to select a spot that is not a confluence. So where two streams come together, you do not want to select that. So we'll select one right here, right outside of the burned area. And here is our watershed. So we're ready to start modeling. So we'll hit the run wet button and we'll just leave the default run one. You can give it a unique name. Next, we select a climate. If you've created your own climate file, you can use it or you can use a Clygen, a synthetically generated climate. And at this point, you can change your model inputs again, if you desire. And here we're ready to start um, modeling, you can again change the climate if you want, and you can select the number of years. You can select watershed or flow path, or both. Flow path does take a lot longer. I'll select the uh, return periods because it creates, uh, it will give me peak flows at the outlet, which is kind of nice to have. Uh, the longer, the more number of years you model, the more return period storms you will get in the output folder but I wanted to model fairly quickly. And I'll tell you a little bit about the results. So you will get two spatial maps. One is hill slope erosion and the other is runoff. The hill slope erosion is gonna pop up right here in the outlet and you can load the runoff if you desire. So let's go back in and look at our run. We have a little results folder here for your convenience and this is the return periods uh, output. So you can get your peak runoff rates. And you got spatial runoff and erosion. And let's see, the summary file contains a report with the average runoff soil loss and sediment yield from each hill slope and channel. The event file has um, the output based on each individual storm event. And then the main output file is the most detailed report with information on the inputs. And it, can, it contains yearly summaries from the hill slope channels and outlets. 
So I hope you enjoy using WEP in the woods. It's fun. <laughs>